When dealing with large amounts of data, we often use summary statistics, like the average or the median or the standard deviation or the, the counts or the sums. And these are very useful because they actually reduce the amount of information we have to look at to get a sense of what is in the data. But there is a downside, because the same summary statistics might be describing a data set that looks like this, or like this, or like this. Let's take a look. It seems counterintuitive that reducing the amount of data would be a good thing, but look at it this way. Instead of looking at thousands of sales receipts or millions of census records, we only look at the averages or the, the sums or the counts of, of people perhaps. And that is a good thing because that way we can understand the data, we can get a sense of the data at least, without having to look through just enormous amounts of data that we could never actually understand. But at the same time, we need to be aware that there is something that we are losing and that is some of the structure of that data. Take a look at these four charts. Clearly, these are four different data sets. They're very different, they look very different. And yet, they actually share a lot in terms of their statistical properties. The X and Y means and standard deviations are the same for all four charts. Also, the correlation coefficient or R squared values are the same. And yet, they're clearly different. This is actually a very famous data set. It's called Anscombe's Quartet. And it's named after a paper published by Francis Anscombe in 1973. Anscombe created this data set specifically to show the potential pitfalls of summary statistics like the mean and the standard deviation and so on. And he argued for the use of statistical graphics to analyze the data. This inspired Alberto Cairo a few years ago to tweet this scatter plot that was soon known as the Datasaurus. And, and, and Alberto, just like Anscombe before him, basically said that you have to look at the chart at the visualization and not just trust the statistics. Two researchers at Autodesk Research, Justin Mateka and George Fitzmorris, took this idea and built a little system that would actually let you create datasets that share the same statistical properties but looked vastly different. Take a look at all these different charts here. I mean, isn't it crazy? They all share the same statistical properties, but they look very, very different. I'm actually just using this animated GIF here that they have on this very, very nice website they built. You should really check that out. I, I put a link to this in the notes below this video. This isn't just an academic exercise, though. Here is one of my favorite news graphics pieces of all time. It's called The Jobless Rate for People Like You by Sean Carter, Amanda Cox, and Kevin Creeley, published in the New York Times in 2009. So this is about 10 years old now. It's actually so old that it was done in Flash. If you don't know what that means, maybe ask your parents. But this is how interactive graphics were done before about 2012. What this shows you is the unemployment rate over time on this line chart at the bottom. So that, that heavy blue line is the overall unemployment rate. That's the number that gets reported in the news media. Uh, every every month or so. But there's also there are also these other lines that show you the breakdown for subgroups, like men or women, or different ethnicities, or different age groups. And as you mouse over, you can you can look at some of the ones that have higher unemployment rate in this case. When you click, it actually selects that, and in this case it also uh, did this little transition here to show you the really high ones. Some of these go up, up to like 50%, which is insane. Now these data are about 10 years old, but still I think the range is actually quite similar to today. There's also this part at the top though, where, you can, where these, these filters respond to what you do at the bottom. And you can click through here and you can compare different ethnicities perhaps. You can look at black versus white versus Hispanic. You might wanna look at the different breakdown of uh, genders, different age groups, And of course, different education levels. And then a big part of this is that you can find yourself in this data set. So I could then go in and say, well, I'm a white dude uh, of a certain age range and uh, I can pick that and I have a college degree. And so I can find myself in this data set and see what that, what that looks like relative to everybody else. So as you can see, there's this huge range of, of unemployment rates for different people depending on their education, their age, their ethnicity, and so on, which is very, very different from the overall number. It's just a single number that is an average 
that just doesn't apply to uh, young black men uh, with no college degree, perhaps, because their, their unemployment rate is way, way higher. So as much fun as the data source may be, this is a real issue with real data sets. And it's important to be aware of that. In the real world, we often look at summaries and, and aggregations, and that's, that's perfectly valid. But it's also important to be able to dig a little deeper and to know to dig a little deeper, that, to know that, that there it might be more in the data than those numbers might tell you. Since you've watched all the way to here, perhaps you found this video interesting. And if so, please consider subscribing and also maybe giving it the thumbs up uh, on YouTube. I'm also interested in hearing your comments and thoughts. This is an experiment, so I'm, I'm looking for feedback. Feel free to leave comments here uh, on YouTube or on my website. And hopefully I will see you soon.